Hello, so this is all about angular velocity and we're also going to cover what angular displacement is and also what radians are and why they're so important for calculating and understanding angular velocity. It's a part of the A-level physics syllabus. It's a part of um, topic 17, circular motion. So I think we should start with radians and what radians are. Essentially, radians are just another way of like representing an angle. And last time we used to do it in terms of degrees, so we would have like 360 degrees, etc. Well, now we can do this with radians instead of this little dot right here. So basically, this radian is basically just a ratio, and it is this, we're trying to represent this angle. Um, it would be the arc length, which is S, divided by the radius, which is denoted by R. So basically, if we want, we were trying to um, represent an angle using radians, then it would be arc length divided by radius, length of arc divided by radius. And since they're both lengths, um, the radian angle is basically just a ratio. So usually people don't put RAD behind angles that are uh, denoted like that are measured by radians for example if we had like 1.57 radians it's perfectly okay to just not write this at all because it is just a ratio so to define it like let's imagine that there is a certain arc and the arc length is actually the exact same with the radius of the circle that means that you know, S equals R. So this angle in radians is going to be S divided by R. And if we can cross that out because they're exactly the same, radian would be one, one radian, that's the angle. So that's where this definition comes from. One radian is the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc length that is equal to the radius of that circle. Subtended at the center of a circle just means it's at the center, and then it makes perfect sense. Arc length is equal to the radius of that circle, gives us one radian. Uh, it's very easy to change radians into degrees. So if we look at a circle, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, and um, we're trying to see what is the angle at the center of it, like all round, that would give an arc length of 2 pi r. Well, we know that theta is s divided by r, so 2 pi r divided by r. We can cross that out, and that means this circular angle can also be denoted by 2 pi radians. However, we all know that the circular like angle thing is 360 degrees, so that gives us this equation of 2 pi radians is 360 degrees, and you can switch this around and it gives us 1 radian is 360 degrees divided by 2 pi radians, or 1 degrees is 2 pi divided by 360 degrees. It's very easy to convert. For example, if you have 90 degrees, you just multiply this, and then you get your answer, and that's going to be in radians. And you can see that because the little degree thingy would cancel out. You can do the exact same for this. If you have something in radians and you want to change it into something in degrees, for example, if you have, you know, pi radians, you can uh, multiply it by 360 divided by 2 pi, which gives us 180 degrees. So that's how you change it. You just multiply these two things. So that's it for radians. Which brings us to angular displacement. So this is all about how objects move in circles. And this is an example of an object moving in a circle. Let's envision like a hand. Here, that's my best drawing of a hand. Um, let's say you're whirling this ball around and around. And these are just shots in different positions that the ball goes through. Uh, this ball is moving in a circle. And let's say you apply the exact same force on your hand. So you don't put more force into your hand to spin it around faster, you just keep it constant. Then you expect this ball to also move around at a constant speed, right? But then we say that the velocity of the ball is changing, and that's because uh, the velocity is a vector quantity, and therefore, the like even though the magnitude of the velocity stays the same, we also have the uh, 
direction of motion, which we have to take into consideration when it's a vector quantity. And when you put things around in a circle and they keep going in it, uh, that means that the direction of motion is not going to be the same at like any point of time um, as the one that was right before. So, um, you know, even like 0 0.0001 seconds after this position, the direction of motion is going to have changed maybe by a little bit, maybe just like this. But in any case, it's never the same in um, something that goes around in circular motion. And that's why we say that the velocity is changing. However, if you keep the force constant, the speed will stay constant. Um, and so it's very complicated to kind of represent these things through velocity. And that's why we have something to help us called angular displacement. It's defined as the angle theta through which an object has moved. And that's it. So, for example, if we had um a clock so let's say this is the clock and this hand moves from here right to here um everyone can see that this is basically 90 degrees so what is the angular displacement 90 degrees and it's actually much better to talk about angular displacement in terms of radians so if we want to change 90 degrees to radians we just do what we've learned before which is 90 times 2 pi divided by 360 and so if we do the math we get pi out of 2 and so that's literally all angular displacement is why is it so useful to us it's because using this we can actually get something called the angular velocity it's denoted by this little sign right here it's called um, omega and that's a greek letter omega it looks like a very curvy w um, and what angular velocity is, is it's pretty self-explanatory if you think about angular displacement. It's defined as the angular displacement per time taken. How much did something move? Like, which is, well, how much angles, how much in angles did something move over a period of time? And how fast is it moving in terms of the angles? Not in terms of the distance traveled, but in terms of the angle right here. So, Basically, it's going to be angular displacement divided by time taken. So omega is delta theta divided by delta time. And the um, sign, so basically the unit for this is really important. It's radians per second, radian second. Um, and this is really important because it's going to assist in a lot of the equations that we're going to derive. And you can see that in my next video. Um, and that's why it's very important that we put radians here, and it's not very helpful if we decide to put degrees here. So, uh, some more facts about circular motion is that the velocity is changing, speed is constant, we've talked about that. But the direction of motion at the instant that the photo is taken is going to be drawn as a tangent to the circular path. So if you think about it, uh, this is a circular path that the ball is following. And let's presume that it is a perfect circle, although my drawing is not perfect. Um, if we took a photo when this ball was at this position, the, the direction of its motion is actually at a tangent. And then you know, maybe one second later, it's going to change a little bit and it's going to be at, you know, the tangent to that circle right there. And so what we can observe from that is that because, you know, this, whatever is holding it, the string or something, is basically also the radius of the circle. So if we have the radius of a circle and then the meeting point for the tangent of the circle, well, that's always 90 degrees. So the direction of motion is not only a tangent, but it's also 90 degrees to the radius or like whatever is holding it together, like a string. Um, and we actually also will call this a centripetal force. So it's 90 degrees to the centripetal force. Um, and so same angular velocity does not mean the same speed. And that's the last part of today's uh, video. And how we can tell this is that uh, if we have like these kids that are on a seesaw, um, although they have the same angular velocity, for example, let's say these kids on this side move downwards. Let's say they move downwards 30 degrees and it takes them like two seconds to do so. That is going to be 30 degrees. Um, and then we times that by 2 pi divided by 360. 
60 and that's the amount of radians um, and and that's gonna give us pi out of 6 so this degree pi out of 6 radians uh, and, and then they go past it in two seconds so if it takes two seconds then it's going to be pi out of 12 radians per second right so these two kids they both have the same angular velocity however this guy travels in a larger circle than this guy travels in a smaller circle so actually the distance that they travel over the time taken is different although their angular velocity is the same and that's why we say that the same angular velocity does not mean that they have the same speed and we can actually calculate speed using the angular velocity um, and the speed will depend on the angular velocity as well as the distance from the center of the circle because as we saw before if you have different distances from the center of the circle you're going to have different speeds um, so these two you need now the, the the equation is that speed is angular velocity times radius why that is the case is actually very easy so velocity or you know speed is actually v so this is speed it's not velocity because velocity is changing so the speed is basically going to be distance traveled and let's put that as s divided by the time taken right uh, what is angular velocity angular velocity is the um kind of delta theta which is basically angular displacement how much in angles did it travel through divided by times taken now and this and you, you know, multiply that by r. And what's important here is that this theta is actually in radians, and radians was s divided by r, the arc length divided by the radius. So we can actually put that in again, is equal to s divided by r times 1 out of t times r, and it all makes sense. So, you know, these two will cross out, which gives us out of t is s out of t and that's how we derive this equation of you know the speed is the angular velocity times radius and that's why as i previously mentioned it's so important that omega is in radians and if it's not in radians and if it's in degrees it's very sensible to change it into radians before calculating the speed because eight radians are the only ones that will take the ratio of like the arc length divided by the radians and that's about it for this topic. Thank you for watching.